Itawamba Community College is now offering three-day weekends. You can be one of the first to take advantage of a compact course schedule with a majority of classes offered Monday through Thursday. Let us customize your education to fit your needs. Become a part of the ICC family and apply today at apply.iccms.edu. ICC, the best start here. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. First American National Bank is a local bank. Our 10 locations are right here in Northeast Mississippi. Banking decisions are made locally by people who live here. It's been that way for more than 50 years. Our involvement in the community is important to us. That's where our roots are. Technology, it changes daily, but our community is what keeps us together. If you like high tech banking, we've got that too. Follow the flag to First American National Bank from Iuka to Tupelo. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. My burger goes best with mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Grass-fed beef. No, corn-fed. On the grill. Now, nah, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame seeds. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys are for Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the Coke. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the Coke. Only with the Coke. Coke and a burger. Come on. All right. That's where you get the flavor. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set for game two here between ICC and Colin. The Indians picked up a 7 to nothing win in the first game of the day. If you're just now joining us, Olivia Burns toss a one-hitter in that game as that hit came in the top of the seventh. It'll be Maddie Miney leading us off here to start game two. Maddie had three hits in the first game of the day. ICC improves to, let me look back at my record as we await this first American National Bank opening pitch. It's across for a strike and it comes her way at 158. It's a 158 first American National Bank opening pitch across for a strike here in game two. So Maddie at the plate, speaks of the first pitch she sees. Left fielder's gonna come up and make a running catch. Nicely done out there in left field as don't have the lineup for Colin here in game two. So we'll try to piece that one together as we go throughout the day as this is gonna be Number Rachel three, Stranisha Rachel now Stranisha. coming to the plate. Stranisha at the plate. Well, everybody's got one of those in the crowd as I see the C improves to 22 and 12, or she'll be 22 and 8 and 1. 12 and 1 in conference play. Colin falls to 18 and 6. 7 and 4 inside conference play. So Rachel Stradisha at the plate. Swings on this one, lifts it up. Center fielder is going to come charging in and calls everyone off and squeezes it for the out. So two away now. As this will be Samantha Conley at the plate. Hey, speaking of Sam, got to meet uh, the rest of her family. Her Samantha granddad Conley. and uh, the whole crew from Louisiana making the trip up here to Colian this afternoon to see Sam play. Sam's been under the weather all week. Did not make the trip to Mississippi Delta. 
And I did not know that until today. So Sam takes that pitch for a ball. 1-0 is the count. She's catching game two like she did in the first game. So Conley going to try to fire up the bats here with two outs and nobody on. 1-0 is the count here to Conley. Change up and just missing low. In the circle, this is Mackenzie Gross. So Gross is in the circle. 2-0 is the count. That pitch drifting high for a ball. So 3-0 is the count here. It's Conley taking the whole way that time, and she draws the walk. So a two-out walk to Samantha Conley, and this will bring up Summer Kreider at the plate. Had a chance to talk to Summer in between the game and complained that she did hit a home run. She said, I got you in game two, Gore, so we'll see if she'll do that here. So Summer will dig in with two outs and a runner over at first base. Thanks for tuning in here to the ICC Sports Network. A special hello to the fans watching on the Colin Network as well. Is that pitch missing high for a ball to Summer Kreider. Lucas taking photos today. Try to get out to golf, but golf wrapped up pretty quickly. ICC finished fourth out of five teams. That pitch across for a strike. Snap throw down to first is not in time as Conley dives back safely. One and one now is the count here on Summer Kreider, the third baseman. So Summer will step out and now dig back in with a one one count. What did the one one pitch here from Gross? Again, taking some time, 1-1 one, one pitch coming. Kreider holds off on that one as the rise ball lifts up out of the zone, and that goes for ball two. Two and one now is the count. There's two outs, a runner over at first base. That is Samantha Conley, who drew a walk with two outs in the inning. So now ICC trying to spark the bats here and see if they can get some two out hits churning here in the top of the first. They scored one in the top of the first of the first game. Runner goes, this pitch is popped up. Nice pitch that time by Gross to get a routine fly ball out to the shortstop to end the inning. So no runs, so no hits, no errors, and one left on base. So let's go ahead and introduce you to today's Coca-Cola starting lineups for the Indians. And this will be today's lineup here for the Indians. ICC and Coke, now that's a winning combination. And Coach Andy Kirk hopes he's got that winning combination put together here again in game two. We've already introduced you to the first four batters of the day. Maddie Miney playing shortstop. Rachel Shanisha is playing second base. Samantha Conley is catching, and Summer Kreider is playing at third base. The DP batting fifth will be Macy Cox. Casey Carpenter will be playing first base and batting sixth. Batting seventh will be Jessica Davis. She's playing out in right field, had that great running catch in the first game of the day. Ellie Miney will be playing left field, batting in that eighth spot. And then it'll be Hope Harbin batting in the nine spot. She'll be playing in center field. Inside the circle here today is going to be Kaylee Nelson. Her family checked in earlier on Twitter, so you know they're still watching here on the ICC Sports Network as she's taking her warm-up tosses here. We're going to take a quick timeout, hear a few words from our sponsors, and be back with more as we head to the bottom of the first scoreless in Game 2. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. And welcome back as we head now to the bottom of the first inning scoreless here in game two. And this will be Callie Fortenberry leading us off here. Callie led off in the first game of the day. So I probably imagine the lineup is going to stay very similar 
to the first game of the day. Fortenberry will start us off, takes that first pitch low for a ball. She played in center field in the first game of the day. So 0-1 is the count. This is Nelson inside the circle. Infield is in, anticipating the slap hit attempt here. She had the only hit of the day, and that came in the seventh inning. As that pitch across for a strike, one and one now is the count. Her hit broke up the no-no for Olivia Burns. She had six Renaissance Bank strikeouts in the first game of the day. She was our sonic star of the game from game one. That ball hops across. Two and one now is the count. Nelson is a freshman. She is out of Bolton, Alabama. Went to Lawrence County High School. 2-1 is the count here on Fortenberry. Slap hit, fouled off, and 2-2 two and two now is the count here on Fortenberry. Carly Polk is on deck. for Colin. Fortenberry walked in her first appearance of the day and she was erased after a nice play by Conley throwing the runner out at second. There's a grounder, shortstop Maddie Miney gets it, throw over, is in time for the out. Six to three for those of you scoring at home. Nicely done that time by Not Ellie playing that shortstop position. So now this should bring up Carly Polk. So Polk will come to the plate here. She slid up the lineup. She was batting in the seventh spot. Now jumped all the way up to that second spot. She was in the outfield. Let's see where she played in game one. Did Polk. She was a right fielder. Is that pitch across for a strike here for Nelson? So Polk playing in right field. Batting second. No outs and nobody on here in the bottom of the first. We're scoreless in game two between ICC and Colin. Ball in the dirt. One of one now is the count. Looks like that's Hannah Walls. Yes, it is. Hannah Walls on deck. As we said, getting this lineup, building it as we go. Did not get a lineup card before the game. Is that pitch just missing inside? Nice frame job that time by... Sam just couldn't get to quite, couldn't quite get the strike call that time. Two balls, one strike, and one out here. We're in the bottom of the first. No score. ICC put a runner on after a walk. Is that ball? Skips across. And three and one now is the count. So three one is the count as Polk will dig back in. Nelson. Need to load up and see if she can find the strike zone here. And she can't. She loses her. So that'll be a one-out walk issued to Polk. Well, the sun is out at the ballpark. If you would have told me two days ago that we would have not only been able to get in the baseball game yesterday at Southwest with no rain and, and even play today's games, I would have been amazed. So that walk was issued to Polk. And now this is going to bring up Hannah Walls. So Walls will dig in, a runner at first, and one out. Walls was the shortstop in the first game of the day. Takes a look at that pitch across for a strike. We do want to say a special hello to those watching on the Colin Sports Network. I believe it's Facebook and, and I think their live stream as well. It's where you're checking this one out today. Ball in the dirt, misses. Blocked up nicely that time by Conley. One and one now is the count. Runner. Thought about going, but Conley stared her back to first. One ball, one strike, one out, and a runner over at first base. Nelson in the circle here, getting the start in game two for the Indians. Boy, the sun is blistering now as that pitch is up high. So what was a nice day when it was overcast is now turned into a hot Sunday afternoon here in Wesson, Mississippi. Two and one now is the count. So two one offering coming. Low and inside, three and one now is the count. So Nelson struggling a little bit to find the zone here. Maddie Miney kind of just walking up to give her a few words of encouragement now as the count goes three one. Three balls, 
One strike and one out. There is a runner over at first base as that is Carly Polk who drew the walk. And that pitch right down the middle for a strike. Good job that time by Nelson to battle back and fill up the strike zone there and force the count to go full. Full count, 3-2. One out and a runner at first. We're in the bottom of the first. No score here in game two. ICC won 7 to nothing in the first game of the day. And that one fouled off and came off the leg of Wall, so she's going to walk that one off a little bit. Nice job being able to find a piece of that pitch and keep the at-bat alive here for Walls. Looks like it's Marley Poole that's on deck for Colin. Andy would love to find a way to turn two and see her in the second. This pitch popped back off the netting and we'll stay at 3-2. So back-to-back -back foul balls there. Good job by Walls to once again find a piece of it and keep it alive here. So Walls will dig back in now. 3-2 is the count. One out and a runner over at first base. Bottom of the first scoreless here in game two between your number 14 ICC Indians and your number nine Colin Wolves. Pitch foul back and out of play. Didn't see any oohs and ahs out of the crowd as that one went towards the van where I'm parked, so that's a good thing. And the count now will stay 3-2. Great job by Poole, or excuse me, Walls to foul these off and keep this at-bat alive here. Count stays full at 3-2. Pitch coming, and oh, that one just missing high. Back-to-back -back walks issue now. That one would have been called strike three of the first game of the day. So a little bit of a different strike zone than what we saw in game one. So now this is going to bring up Marley Poole. So Poole will dig in here in the first game of the day. Marley batted in that second spot. She did play first base. So now an opportunity here for the Wolves to get something going in game two. Early on, they've got runners on first and second. One out. 26, Marley Poole. So now this is Poole at the plate. Harmony Ashley is on deck. Is that pitch across for a strike? Nice fastball. In there for a strike. So one out, runner is at second and first. Pool swings and misses. Nice job on that pitch there. Just took a little bit of it off and it fell out of the zone. Swing and a miss. 0 oh, 2 now is the count here to Marley Pool. Again, we thank everyone tuning in here on both the ICC and Colin Sports Network. Remind you, Tuesday we'll be back in action as we play host to Holmes. And there's a big time swing and a miss for a Renaissance Bank strikeout. Clutch out there as you see that pitch just had Poole confused that time. And now there's two outs in the inning. Can the Indians find a way to get out of this inning with no damage done? Boy, it would be huge if they could do that. Adam and Benny, or Benny and Teresa Ping checking in from Danville, Virginia. Swing and a miss there. So I knew the Pings were going to be watching today as they typically watch uh, some of Macy's family checking in all the way out there in Virginia. So we do appreciate you guys checking in and also checking in on Twitter. You can do that at Let's Go ICC. That pitch of beauty. As Ashley thought about pulling the trigger on that one, did not. It paints the corner for strike two. 0-2 oh now is the count. Runners at first and second. There's two outs. Bottom of the first. We're scoreless here in game two between ICC and Colin. That pitch, not a bad spot to miss that time on that outside corner. See if you couldn't get her to chase one. Even if she was able to make contact, probably would have been a foul ball. But that goes for a ball. One and two now is the count here to Harmony Ashley, the DP. Pitch coming. Liner, second baseman, Sternisha gets it, tosses it over for the out, and that will do it. So after back-to-back -back walks, it was a Renaissance Bank strikeout and a ground out to second to end the inning with no damage done. We've played one here in Wesson. ICC and Colin scoreless. We'll take a break and hear a word from our sponsors and be back with more right after this on Let's Go ICCTV.com. First American National Bank is a local bank. Our 10 locations are right here in Northeast Mississippi. 
Banking decisions are made locally by people who live here. It's been that way for more than 50 years. Our involvement in the community is important to us. That's where our roots are. Technology, it changes daily, but our community is what keeps us together. If you like high-tech banking, we've got that too. Follow the flag to First American National Bank. From Iuka to Tupelo. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now to the top of the second inning. It'll be the five, six, seven batters due up here for ICC. Macy Cox, Casey Carpenter, and Jessica Davis. No score as we move to the second. Neither team has got a hit so far in the contest. It was a walk to Samantha Conley. She was left stranded. Back-to-back -back walks for Colin in the bottom half of the first. They left both of those stranded thanks to a Renaissance Bank strikeout and a ground out to the second baseman. So Macy will start us off here. She looks at that pitch outside missing for a ball. Well, nice day when the breeze is blowing. When it's not, I'm gonna tell you this folks, it's hot outside. But compared to the weather that was expected to be in the area, not complaining one bit. It's Macy, fouls this one back. And one and one now is the count. Wind blowing into the ballpark from center field to home plate. It's been shifting throughout the day. Lucas and I, uh, he's the SID here at Colin for those that might not be familiar with him on the ICC side of things. We looked at the forecast between games and they've actually pushed the rain all the way back to 10 o'clock tonight. Is that pitch, ooh, good looking pitch, called a ball, two and one now is the count here on Macy Cox. So Cox leading us off here in the top of the second. No score, game two. ICC won the first game of the day, seven to nothing, behind a one-hit effort from Olivia Burns. As Macy puts a charge into this one, but the left fielder able to run over and make the play. So a line out to left there for Macy Cox. And now this is gonna be Casey Carpenter coming to the plate with one out and nobody on. Number 27, Casey Carpenter. So right now, ICC playing Adam ball. And what I mean by that is they're hitting it right at him. Pretty much all three outs of the first inning was routine plays. And Casey Carpenter, the first baseman, going to try to shake things up here with one out and nobody on in the top of the second. Carpenter looks at that pitch. It comes back in for a strike. So 0-1 is the count here to Casey Carpenter. Casey, a freshman out of Grenada. She went to Grenada High School. Swings on this one, pops it. Over the top of us here in the ICC Alumni, Found, Alumni Association and Foundation, or I should say Alumni Affairs and Foundation. Find out how you could contribute to Itawamba Community College. It's a lot easier than me trying to say that by visiting iccms.edu. That's iccms.edu. So 0-1 is the count. Or, and Carpenter at the plate. Looks at that pitch. One and one. I think it's one and two, actually. The umpire not showing the count. Scoreboard showing one and one. So Gross taking her time here. This one popped up. Right fielder is able to come over and get it for the out. So another routine out there for Colin and ICC with two away now. This is going to be Jessica Davis. Davis at the plate, will dig in, trying to spark the bats here for the Indians. Jessica Davis. Two outs quickly, a line drive out to left and a fly ball out to right. And that's the two outs now here in the top of the second. That pitch clips the corner for a strike. 0-1 oh is the count now here to Jessica Davis. Well, we talked about ICC hosting Holmes on Tuesday. Next game for Colin, for those that are 
listening on the Colin Network as this pitch is popped up. Shortstop should have an easy play on this one, and she does. So three up, three down. Go the Indians there in the second. I'll finish that thought before taking you to a break. Looking at the schedule, April the 9th, Meridian will, or excuse me, Colin will travel to Meridian three and five o'clock will be those times. We're scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. Itawamba Community College is now offering three-day weekends. You can be one of the first to take advantage of a compact course schedule with a majority of classes offered Monday through Thursday. Let us customize your education to fit your needs. Become a part of the ICC family and apply today at apply.iccms.edu. ICC, the best start here. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set to move to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be the six, seven, eight batters due up. Looks like this is going to be number eight, Julie Sherman. To start us off here. Now, it's not spelled the traditional spelling of Sherman. Let me get it wrote down on my stat book, and I'll give you the spelling here. It is S-C-H-E-U-E-R-M-A-N-N. But it's pronounced Sherman. As I was told earlier, she stands in, pops up the first pitch. Trouble. And it's going to drop, and that's going to go for a hit as neither player really touched it. Or actually, let's call that an error, but I don't know who put the error on. Does it come down and drop between the two batters that time? So there is a big time break there for Cole in. Just a miscommunication on the part of the Indians. As we talked about, the ball gets up high enough in the air. The wind is, you can't see it, but the wind is whipping pretty tall in the top part of the trees. Bon attempt. So that first pitch, a swing and a miss on the bunt attempt. 0-1 is the count. And that one across for a strike. 0-2 now goes the count here. This is number 10, Delaney McMillan. So 0-2 pitch coming. Drifting high, couldn't get her to chase one. So it is going to be an error on the first baseman. So there's a ground ball, chance to turn two here. They get the lead runner, and they're not going to be able to get the second runner there. A nice slide to take out the opportunity on the play. So score that one five to four on the putout of Sherman. So uh, with one out in the inning, this is going to be number 12, Tory Pettit coming to the plate. So Pettit will dig in with one out and a runner at first base. That's McMillan who reached on a fielder's choice. So that will actually round out, or the next batter will round out our lineup. There's a grounder and a nice play over at third. Looked to second, didn't have a play, and they zip it back and she dives back in safely. Five to three, nicely done there by Summer Kreider. She, or excuse me. Yeah, Summer Kreider, she was in that time. It was a hard hit ball. Stuck her glove out, found it. Didn't have a play at second. Made sure she got the for sure out. And now up is going to be Caitlin Heyman. 
So Heyman, the number nine batter, will dig in and try to see if she can get a two-out rally here. Sparked for Colette in the bottom of the second. We're scoreless here in game two. That pitch missing low for a ball. Let's see if I can pick up where some players are playing in the field. As 1-0 is the count, so we'll see if we can pick those up. As that pitch missing high for ball two. And so if that is the case, then we'll try to uh, give you the lineup or defensive setup, if you will, for Colin the next time they're in the field. 2-0 is the count. This is Caitlin Heyman, the number nine batter. Looks at that pitch missing low for a ball. So 3-0 is the count. Heyman quickly ahead of the count here on Nelson. First base is open. There is a runner at second, two outs in the inning. That one right down the middle for a strike. Good job by Nelson to come back and fill up the zone, taking the whole wave that time was Heyman. 3-1 now is the count. So 3-1, awaiting the pitch here from Nelson. There's two outs and a runner on second. And that's going to miss. Third walk of the game here for Nelson. As that one a little low for the umpire's liking. And so now runners at first and second with two outs for the second straight inning now. And this is going to be Callie Fortenberry. Trying to turn down the crowd mic a little bit there for you. As music much louder here in game two than it was in the first game of the day. That pitch across for a strike here to Fortenberry. Fortenberry grounded out to the shortstop in her first at bat of the day. Trying to see if she can spark the bats with two outs here in the bottom of the second. Scoreless contest here in game two between the number nine, Colin Wolves, and number 14, Indians of ICC. That pitch missing one and one now is the count. One ball, one strike, and two outs here. Bottom of the second, Colin threatening again. They left runners stranded on second and first to the top of the first, ICC, hoping to do that again here at the bottom of the second. So winning the 1-1 offering here for Nelson. Shows butt, pulls back and takes that for a strike. So one and two now is the count. Two outs, runners on first and second. Bottom of the second. The myth, the, the lady, the legend, Natalie Davis has walked in the house. She knew I was going to give that shout-out as soon as I saw you. Good, good. There's a ground ball to the shortstop. Maddie Miney in time for the putout. Six to three. Second time Fortenberry has been retired on the putout. So we're going to take a break. I'm going to talk to Natalie during that break. We'll move to the top of the third. Scoreless right after this on Let's Go ICC TV. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. The longer a person has diabetes, the more likely they are to develop diabetic retinopathy. If left untreated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. That's why it's important for diabetics to have a comprehensive eye examination with dilation once a year. I'm Dr. Laurie Cagle of Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. We offer comprehensive eye exams to provide diagnosis and treatment of various eye diseases. Browse our large selection of frames available in prescription and non-prescription. Call to schedule your appointment today at Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. Celebrate outrageous amounts of toppings with Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest. With the most cheese and now with the most toppings at the nation's best price. Create your favorite pizza starting at six bucks. Pay, then express pickup at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza.
So Gross in the circle. That first pitch across for a strike. 0-1 is the count here to Ellie Miney, her first at bat of the game here. Ellie takes a look at that pitch. High for a ball. 1-1 one one now is the count. You look back at game one, Ellie singled, scored a run. So she was one for three on the day in the first game of the afternoon. Ellie playing in left field. Hasn't had any action come her way defensively. As this is a shot but pulled foul down over the fence down the third baseline. There were some fans in a chair over there. and Luckily that split a couple of fans and was hit the ground running and trickled back into that tree line. As now the count goes one and two here on Miney. Hope Hartman is on deck and then we'll go back to the top of the lineup in Maddie Miney. And change up, popped up, third baseman's gonna have to go back and makes the play. An over the shoulder catch by the third baseman. Nicely done and another easy pop up. A little bit more difficulty on that play than the previous ones there. So I believe that was Tori Pettit who made that play there. So one out now, this is gonna be Hope Harbin coming to the plate. So one out and nobody on. We're in the top of the third, scoreless here in game two. Harbin lays down the butt. Easy play as they zip it over just in time. Hope's got good speed, but it was an easy fielding play that time by the pitcher, Gross. She zipped it over the first and got her by a step, and now that's to bring up Maddie Miney with two outs here in the inning. So the Indians had ten hits in game one. Three of those belonged to Maddie Miney. She reached base four out of five times as she reached on a fielder's choice as, as well. She went three for five on the day. A little off-speed pitch in there for a strike. 0-1 is the count. Two outs, nobody on here. Indians went three up, three down in the second, trying to avoid that here in the third. Maddie Miney at the plate. She flew out to left in her first trip to the plate as that pitch drifts high for a ball. So one and one is the count. There's two outs here. Top of the third inning, no score in game two. Pitch coming. And Maddie couldn't catch up with that one. Good location on the pitch there out of the hands of Gross. And one and two now. One and two is the count. I'm gonna try to turn down my crowd mic a little bit more here in a minute. Oh, what did the one two pitch? There's a shot, and the outfielder fell down, but made an adjustment to get the ball. Great job out there in left field by Heyman. Heyman lost her footing, went down to a knee, was able to get up. The ball carried just far enough for her to make the play to record the third out of the inning. Adam Ball continuing here for the Indians as we've played through two and a half, and we're still scoreless. We'll take a break and come back with the bottom half of the third, but before we do that, We'll take a break and hear a word from the PTK in Tupelo. Student involvement is a top priority here at Itawamba Community College. If you want to be involved with student government, then the Student Government Association is the place for you. If you have a stellar GPA, then Phi Theta Kappa is for you. If you're interested in the diverse culture of our campus population, then the Diversity Club is for you. If you're interested in leadership and service, then Indian Delegation is for you. If you're majoring in computer programming or computer networking, then CPNA, the Computer Programming Networking Association, is for you. If you're interested in good conversations and free lunch on Thursdays, then the Wesley Foundation is for you. Our health science programs also have specific organizations for those majors. Student activities are excited to bring you new opportunities here at the ICC Tupelo campus. Whatever your passion may be, we have a place for you. This video is brought to you by Phi Theta Kappa, Beta Tau Sigma, Tupelo campus. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set for the bottom of the third inning. It'll be the two, three, four batters due up here for Colin, Polk, Walls, and Poole. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Got a pretty good little pitcher's duel going on here between Ross and Nelson. Colin has left. The Colin left runners on in scoring position. Leading off the bottom of the third inning, number six, Harley. 
Well, Brother Chris asking a question about the layout of the field, so we'll discuss that this inning and kind of let you know what it looks like in the background as the net kind of distorting the distance or the view distantly as that pitch missing low. So if you look out there, you see the scoreboard and left center behind it is a pole barn, if you will, where they've got their hitting cages set up here. And then in center field, you see a back of an 18-wheeler that's advertising Colins. That pitch is across for a strike. It's a bit faded as it looks like it's been out there for a minute. But it says Colin, and it's got uh, some of the programs they offer here. Choose your pathway. And it gives the website for that on the web, on there. Actually, a great idea on parking the 18-wheeler out there. I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but it does give a great advertisement on their live stream. So that's your outfield, Brother Chris. You got trees to the right and a parking lot to the left. This pitch foul back into the count now at two and two. Carly Polk, she walked and was left stranded at second. That was back in the first inning when they sent five batters to the plate, but could not push across a run. As a matter of fact, Colin has left four runners on the bags, two in run scoring position. ICC only one runner, and that was back in the first inning when Samantha Conley drew a walk, but she was left stranded at first. Time is taken. So Polk will dig back in. Two and two is the count. Nelson in the circle. That ball missing as it hops across the plate, and the count goes full. There's been a few pitches like that that Nelson's kind of just let slip out of her hand a little bit too soon. 3-2 now is the count. So Nelson's going to have to battle back here, put it in the zone. Swung on and missed for strike three. Great job that time by Nelson. As a swing and a miss that time for the second Renaissance Bank strikeout of the game. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, renaissancebank.com. Member Wall. FDIC. So one out now, and this is Hannah Walls. Walls walked. It was left stranded at first. Swings on the first pitch she sees. A slow roller to third. Kreider scoops it up and throws it over in time for the putout. Five to three for those of you that may be scoring at home. And two away now. And this is going to bring Marley Poole to the plate. Marley, first baseman. She struck out for the second out of the first inning. Thank you for tuning in here on the Red Channel on Let's Go ICCTV.com. Remind you, our next broadcast will be Tuesday when softball plays host to homes. There's a grounder. Shortstop, Maddie Miney scoops it, throws it over, and gets her in time. So a three up, three down inning in the bottom of the third. We're still scoreless. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We'll take a break and hear a few words from our sponsors and come back to the top of the fourth. Going to be Rachel Stranisha, Samantha Conley, and Summer Kreider due up for the Indians. Back with more right after this. You could say it's about the clubs. You could say it's about the ball. You could even say it's about the course or the weather. But what it really comes down to is consistency and hard work. Over and over and over again. At Renaissance, we understand consistency. We understand hard work. Most importantly, we understand you. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. The longer a person has diabetes, the more likely they are to develop diabetic retinopathy. If left untreated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. That's why it's important for diabetics to have a comprehensive eye examination with dilation once a year. I'm Dr. Laurie Cagle of Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. We offer comprehensive eye exams to provide diagnosis and treatment of various eye diseases. Browse our large selection of frames available in prescription and non-prescription. Call to schedule your appointment today at Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. And welcome back now as we shift to the top of the fourth inning. Still scoreless here in game two as we've got quite the pitcher's duel. ICC is yet to have a hit, so a no-hitter going through three innings here for Mackenzie Gross. Rachel Stradisha, Samantha Conley, and Summer Kreider do up here. Rach, she flew out to center field in her first at bat today. It was a hard hit ball, but a nice play as it was pretty much just three steps to her left for the center fielder, Callie Fortenberry, to retire Stradisha, so Stradisha at the plate. 
Ross taking a little bit too much time. She takes time. The umpire gives it to her. And she is going to step out and get it. Well, finally, the PA guy got her name right, and he gets a cheer from the crowd. As that pitch missing for a ball, 1-0 is the count. So 1-0 is the count here to Rachel Sternisha. That pitch across for a strike, 1-1 one one now is the count here to Rach. Sam Conley is on deck. She walked, was left stranded in the first. She's actually been the only base runner for the Indians so far through three innings. Everything has been pretty routine for Colin defensively, except for one nice play to retire Ellie Mani on a catch over the shoulder by the third baseman. Stratisha pops this one up. Center fielder is going to come running in and will make the play to retire Stratisha once again. So a long running catch that time, but a routine pop up to retire Stranisha. And now this will be Samantha Conley. So Sam will come to the plate and will dig in. She drew a walk in her previous at bat. So Sam trying to break up this no hitter going for Gross through three and a third. That pitch drifts high for a ball. Speaking of a no hitter, that's what Olivia Burns had going all the way through six innings. She gave up a single in the top of the seventh to lead off the seventh, actually, in the bottom of the seventh, I should say, to break up that no-hitter. But ICC held on to win the game 7 to nothing. That pitch missing low for a ball. So Conley will dig back in. We'll have to await the sign from the umpires. That one across for a strike. Two balls, one strike is the count. So Conley will dig in here. Sam waits on this one, lifts it up. Left fielder is going to come over, and the ball carried just enough again for the left fielder to get underneath it. So the ball is just carrying on the ICC Indians. In game one, that would have knifed away from the left fielder. Instead, that one hung up, and the left fielder, seven, that was Caitlin Heyman, came over and camped underneath that one for the out. That was the fourth put out of the game for Caitlin Heyman. So two outs now. This is going to be Summer Kreider. She popped up to the shortstop to end the first. Trying to redeem herself here with a two out hit in the top of the fourth inning. We're still scoreless as that pitch missing low for a ball. So 1-0 is the count here to Summer Kreider. She's playing third base. She's got three assists. Defensively does Kreider this afternoon. 1-0 is the count here to the freshman. Kreider looks at that pitch, and it's going to be just outside. A good-looking pitch, but called a ball. 2-0 now is the count. Kreider is out of Morville High School. She's from Tupelo. She's a freshman. She's listed as a pitcher slash third baseman, but has strictly been a third baseman this season for the Indians. So 2-0 is the count. Time is going to be taken here by the catcher, and it is granted. So they're going to resend the signs here. So the 2-0 pitch coming. Kreider pops this one up over the top of us here in the ICC Alumni Affairs and Foundation Broadcast booth. Find out how you can contribute to Itawamba Community College by visiting iccms.edu. That's iccms.edu. So 2-1 is the count. This pitch fouled off, and now to be two and two. So two two is the count. Two outs, nobody on. Kreider lifts this one. It's got a chance. Back, 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 gone. Well, Summer told me she was going to do it, and she delivers a solo home run with two outs. 
and Summer Kreider puts a run on the board for the Indians, and ICC leads it now, one to nothing. A big time hit there for the Indians. Well, I was picking on her between games, saying, really, you didn't hit me a home run. She promised me one here in game two, and guess what? Summer delivered. So a big time home run there off the bat of Summer Kreider coming with two outs in the inning, and now ICC leads it. Number 30, Macy Cox. One to nothing, and now this is Macy Cox coming to the plate. A big time two out hit there. Ballpark not big enough for it, as that one was on a rocket out to left field. So that pitch is going to miss low for a ball to Macy. That pitch missing, 2-0 oh now is the count. So 2-0 is the count here to Macy Cox. That home run being brought to you by Little Caesars of Fulton. The quickest pizza in Little Ce in Itawamba County has just gotten quicker thanks to the new Little Caesars app. You can download the app to your smartphone, punch in the information needed as this pitch fouled off and out of play towards a truck. And, oh, that one misses again. But, yeah, punch it in. You can order your pizza, build it. Pay for it for your phone, it'll give you a code or even a QR code as well. You just scan that to the new kiosk. You can pick up your pizza in and out in a flash there on South Adams Street. That's Little Caesars. Real quick, shout out to my boy Jacob Judon tuning in here on Let's Go ICC TV. As Macy fouls this one off. If you missed some of Jacob's work as he's helped us with some video work this year, you can go to our YouTube page just by... by searching Let's Go ICC. As 2-2 is the count. And this one popped up. If it stays fair, it's trouble, but it's hooking foul. And so we'll stay at 2-2 now is that one. Looking like my golf shot. So it took a hard turn left and fell in foul territory. But yeah, to go back and talk about Jacob again, he did a good job. I gave him my GoPro, said, man, go crazy. He did. He shot me 62 selections of footage. You can go see his work over on, a, on our YouTube page by searching Let's Go ICC. As Cox looks at that pitch for a ball, 3-2 now. It's under Inside ICC. It's also available on the ICC Baseball Facebook page as well. So shout out to my boy Jacob for helping out with that. I'm going to try to hook him up with the camera again. Maybe Wednesday when we go to Northeast. So the count goes full now at 3-2 with two outs. Macy rips one. It's going to be get past the diving second baseman. And that's a big time two out hit there. As it looked like it might have actually deflected off the glove of the pitcher. Just a little seeing eye single that time. As Noah just got right past it and had passed a diving second baseman. Great effort by McMillan to try to get after the ball there. And now this is going to be Casey Carpenter coming to the plate. one nothing is the score. ICC trying to spark a two-out rally here. And we're going to have a runner coming into this situation here to replace Cox on the bases. I believe this is going to be McKenzie Toombs coming in to run. Yes, it will be. So McKenzie Toombs will enter to run for Macy over at first base. So this will be a runner, and they'll plug Macy right back into the lineup in that DP position batting-wise. So one nothing is your score. Macy Cox at first base. Number 16, McKenzie Toombs. So Toombs will come to the plate. Not one tomb, but Toombs. It is plural. Two outs. Toombs is over at first base, and this is Casey Carpenter at the plate. Pitches across for a strike. Nicely done that time by Gross to come back and just zip that one across and get ahead in the count. 0-1.
So Carpenter, a freshman out of Grenada High School, digging in here. A runner at first with two outs, a two out home run. That's highlighted the Indian inning and so far there's another hit for the Indians. Another two out hit there off the bat of Casey Carpenter. And the Indians bats have woke up a little bit here in the top of the fourth inning. As that was a hard hit single out to left field, just found the gap that time. We're gonna have a break in the action as the coach wants to come out and have a meeting inside the circle. We'll take the time out with them. And we'll hear more about this three day weekend going on at ICC, back with more. ICC leads it one to nothing, two outs in the top of the fourth. <laughs> Itawamba Community College is now offering three-day weekends. You can be one of the first to take advantage of a compact course schedule with a majority of classes offered Monday through Thursday. Let us customize your education to fit your needs. Become a part of the ICC family and apply today at apply.iccms.edu. ICC, the best start here. And welcome back as there's no changes made inside the circle here. Just a brief meeting, and this is going to be Jessica Davis coming to the plate. So Jessica will dig in. She popped up to the shortstop to end the second, trying to keep the bats hot here for the Indians. It's been three straight hits with two outs here in the top of the fourth. ICC leading it one to nothing. Davis looks at that pitch, low for a ball. You've got Toombs at second. She's running in place of Macy Cox, who singled behind Summer Kreider's solo home run. And then Casey Carpenter over at first base. She followed with a single out to left as well. Cross trying to find the exit here in the fourth. That pitch high for a ball. Toombs charging off the bag at second. Sherman just walks up and looks her back to second. 2-0 oh now is the count. So Davis playing in right field. She had a great catch out there in right field to rob Colin of an extra base hit in game one. Hasn't had anybody come her way in game two. There's a strike. Pump fake on the throw, and Toombs will jog back. Two and one now is the count here to Davis. Two balls, one strike, and two outs. Runners on first and second here for ICC. They're leading one to nothing. They're looking for an insurance run or two this inning. Of course, when we talk about those insurance runs, we talk about your Etowah County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox. Swung on and missed for strike two. For all your insurance needs, stop by and see Joey there on South Adams Street. Joey, a former ICC All-American in football and a proud sponsor of ICC Athletics here on the ICC Sports Network. He's my insurance guy, so you know you can't go wrong. So stop by and see Joey there in Fulton. 2-2 pitch popped up. Center fielder is going to come over and will make the play. Actually almost ran under it a little bit too much that time. But a pop out to center ends the inning. But the Indians get one run on three hits, no errors, and two left on base. It was a home run by Summer Kreider. That's the difference in the contest right now. As we'll take a break and move to the bottom of the fourth. But before we do that, let's hear a word from all of our sponsors right here on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. Crunchy Fritos, warm chili, melty cheese, all together for 99 cents. It's like real comfort food. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone, and these guys keep pulling me back in. Pulling me back in. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves starting at 99 cents. And try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. A Fritos Chili Pie. Juicy Junior Burger. Or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. And hey, welcome back now as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning for Colin. It'll be the 5-6-7 batters due up. Ashley, Sherman, and McMillan. They're 0 for 3. Actually, Sherman did reach on an error by the Indians to start the second, but was erased on a fielder's choice. Colin has put... 
four runners on the bag. They've left two of those stranded in scoring position. And so now Ashley, the DP, will dig in. She grounded out to second in her first at bat. Swings at that pitch, missing for a ball. Umpire actually said it got a piece of it. So foul back for a strike. I don't know why I said missing for a ball. So it was low out of the zone, I guess, is what I was trying to say. But it was tipped and fouled off. That pitch missing outside. One and one now is the count here on Harmony Ashley. She is the DP like she was in the first game of the day. Indians lead it one to nothing. Summer Kreider. She caught it between games and delivered. It was a solo home run as that pitch missing high. Two and one now goes the count here to Ashley. Harmony Ashley of Wesson, Mississippi, right here, a hometown girl. She went to the Wesson Attendance Center. She's a sophomore infielder. And that one across for a strike. Two and two now is the count here on Ashley. Pitch coming. And no, that's not strike three. Good looking pitch there. He's gonna ask what it was. He said it was a little bit too low for his liking and now the count goes full. Well, a good looking pitch there to ring her up on, but good eye though by Ashley to hold off on that one and that was gonna be ball four. Oh, tough walk there to start the inning as the Indians thought they got another Renaissance Bank strikeout. Instead, ball four will put Ashley over at first base and we may have a runner coming in this situation. Now she's gonna come over and talk to the home plate umpire. That appears to be the case. It looks like this is gonna be double zero. April Lynn coming in to run in this situation and that is gonna be the case. April is a freshman out of Vicksburg. She went to Warren Central High School. And so she enters to run in this situation after a leadoff walk was issued to Harmony Ashley. So you gotta feel like this would just be a pinch runner and then a re-entering re of Harmony Ashley after the inning. So now this is gonna be the catcher, Julie Sherman. I've been very impressed with Julie behind the plate today as she has been active quite often behind the plate and has been money for the Wolves, not letting anything get past her and allow any runs to advance, or runners to advance, I should say. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? Well, the first baseman is in extreme. Third baseman, mid-depth. Middle of the infield is back in this situation. They're anticipating a slap hit or maybe even a bunt opportunity in a sacrifice situation here. Ground ball, it's gonna be a foul ball. Oh, coach had it. And that's gonna be an error on the coach there. Nice effort though, she stayed with it. As that was not a soft liner down the line. So Coach Harmon couldn't quite hang on to that one there. One and one is the count here to Sherman. Shows ball, it pops it up. And the third baseman gets it in. That's going to be retired for an out. Well, heads up play that time with the part of April Lynn. She charged hard off the bag. Credit the first base coach over there for Cole Lynn to give her the heads up that the ball was going to be caught. If not, they could have possibly doubled them up that time. But instead, only one out. And now this is going to be Delaney McMillan. She reached on a fielder's choice to the third baseman in her previous at bat. She's playing second base, much like she did in the first game here in game two. Runner goes, throw down is not in time. It was in time, but the throw was up the line. Good effort by Maddie Miney to try to apply the tag. If it would have been more on line, would have had her. But instead, the stolen base credited to April Lynn. Come on, D. Come on, D. Give me a hit. That pitch drifting high. 2-0 and now is the count here to McMillan. Well, that stolen base takes the routine double play off the, off the board here for ICC. There is one out in the inning. Tying run is now in scoring position. Mc, McMillan looks at that one. Ball in the dirt blocked up nicely that time by Samantha Conley. As I said, she's got a lot of family members here. I think they're out of Florida making the trip over to visit family. So they drove up to see Sam play this afternoon. They would love to take home two wins with them back to Florida, if possible. 3-0 pitch coming, and that one right down the middle for a strike. Good job by Nelson. 
to load up and zip that one in there for strike one. Three and one now is the count here on McMillan. McMillan batting in that seventh spot of the lineup is Tory Pettit on deck. 3-1 pitch, that one drifts high for a ball. Second walk here in the inning. So now runners on first and second. Well, that's what the Wolves had in the first. That's also what they had in the second, but could not get anything going there. We may have another runner coming into this situation. We'll see what they elect to do. Or excuse me, actually a new batter. So this is going to be Kyle Libra, Washington. I'm probably saying that name wrong, so I do apologize if so, but Washington will come in and a pinch hit this situation in place of Tory Pettit. She's out of Northeast Jones. So Key Aubrey, Washington. Runners on first and second with one out here. We're in the bottom of the fourth, ICC, with a one to nothing lead, but Colin threatening here once again in the fourth. Shows bunt, pulls back, takes it for a ball, or excuse me, takes it for a strike. 0-1 is the count here to Washington. First at bat of the day for Washington. Did not see any action in the first game of the day. Looking for a clutch hit here. That one missing low, one and one now is the count. One of the ICC fans did not like that one, but it was low in the zone. One and one now is the count here on Washington. So Washington at the plate, runners at first and second after two walks here in the inning. Swung on and missed, could not catch up with the low fastball. That goes for strike two. One and two now is the count here on Washington. Boy, it would be a big time for a Renaissance Bank strikeout here if Nelson could find one. She's got two already. She gets the signals from the ICC dugout. Set to deliver now. One-two pitch coming. Change up. Lifted. This is trouble, and it's gone. That's going to be a three-run home run for Colin. And a big time pitch hit there. As that time the changeup was hung up on the outside of the plate and Washington sends that one out to left field and that's a big time hit there as Colin takes their first lead of the day. She actually walked that one the final few spots. And so a three run home run there on a pitch hit situation by Washington and it's now 3-1 in favor of Colin. And now this is going to bring up Caitlin Heyman. Heyman walked in her previous at bat. Three to one now is the score. It's been a pair of long balls that has been the difference maker in this game. It was a solo home run by Summer Kreider. And now that's a three run shot by Washington. And it's three one now here in the bottom of the fourth with one out. So the Indians still got to find a couple of outs before they can get out of this inning. This pitch popped up back and it's going to get out of play. And it's going to roll underneath the vehicle out there. 0-1 is the count here to Heyman. This pitch popped up, and it's going to fall out of play. And now 0-2 is the count here to the left fielder, Heyman. She's had, she's had some nice plays out there in left field. Four putouts so far in the contest, including one where she slipped down Went down to a knee, was able to get up and kind of spun out before getting to the ball. As this one fouled straight back to us here in the broadcast booth. As that one was on the line right to me. But yeah, to finish that thought, she made a great job getting up and getting that line out of Maddie Monty to end the third. So 0-2 is the count after that foul ball. Keeps it an 0-2 count. This one coming right back at you again. And we'll stay at 0-2. So a couple of foul balls keeping this at bat alive here for Caitlin Heyman. One out in the inning. A three-run home run off the bat of Washington it is the difference in the game right now. Swung on and missed. Ball in the dirt. That'll get picked up and tossed down in time for the putout. So that's going to be another Renaissance Bank strikeout. Two to three on the putout of Heyman. Now there's two away. So we go back to the top of the lineup now, and this is going to be Fortenberry. 
Fortenberry playing in center field. She's got 0 for 2 is her situation. A pair of ground outs to the shortstop so far here in game two. So that's going to be a liner, and there's Maddie Miney to take care of business. Nicely done that time by Maddie to reel in that liner. The third time in a row that Maddie has taken care of Fortenberry, and that will do it. But it was a big shot by McKenzie. The difference in the ball game right now, three runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Three to one is your score. We'll take a break and be back with the top of the fifth right after this on Let's Go ICCTV.com. You could say it's about the clubs. You could say it's about the ball. You could even say it's about the course or the weather. But what it really comes down to is consistency and hard work. Over and over and over again. At Renaissance, we understand consistency. We understand hard work. Most importantly, we understand you. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. The longer a person has diabetes, the more likely they are to develop diabetic retinopathy. If left untreated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. That's why it's important for diabetics to have a comprehensive eye examination with dilation once a year. I'm Dr. Laurie Cagle of Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. We offer comprehensive eye exams to provide diagnosis and treatment of various eye diseases. Browse our large selection of frames available in prescription and non-prescription. Call to schedule your appointment today at Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. New batter in the lineup here for ICC. This is going to be Joanna Vasquez coming to the plate. JoJo did get a bat in the first game of the day. She went one for one with a single. Three to one is your score here as we move to the top of the fifth inning. It was a home run by Summer Kreider in the top of the fourth that gave ICC a one to nothing lead. And then it was a pinch hit home run in the bottom half of the inning from Washington that scored three runs, and that's your contest right now, the scoring update being brought to you by your friends in Sonic in Fulton. So Joanna Vasquez will start us off here in the top of the fifth. She's batting in place of Ellie Miney. So JoJo will try to start us off in a positive note here. ICC trailing three to one. Change up, and it's a beauty off-speed pitch. Zips it across for a strike. There to JoJo. So 0-1 is the count. So the first pitch for a strike, awaiting the second pitch here. That one high for a ball. 1-1 one one now is the count. So one and one is the count here on JoJo. She's starting us off here on the top of the fifth. Pops this one up, and it's going to stay in room, and it's going to be caught by the catcher. Well, a good pitch that time by Gross to get on the hands of JoJo. Popped it up in foul territory and recorded the out was the catcher. That was Sherman. So now this is going to be Hope Harbin. Number 17, Hope Harbin. Looks like they're just going to simply re-enter. Ellie Monty as the home plate umpire went in and checked with uh, Andy Kirk that time. This is going to be Hope Harbin. Hope grounded out to the pitcher in her first and only at bat of the game so far. ICC's got three hits. One for Colin, and that was a big one. That three-run home run in the bottom of the fourth. Is that pitch? Borderline pitch. Good-looking pitch, but caught a ball. Not really sure where that one missed, folks, as that one looked like a pretty good pitch. 1-0 is the count. Now, when I say that looked like a pretty good pitch, you've heard me say that for both ways. So this umpire has been consistent today. And again, and you'll hear me say this throughout the year, all you're really looking for is consistency. Another bunt laid down, the throw over, and it's going to be an error. Error on the throw that time, and Hope will reach on that one-out error. It would have been another bang-bang play, but I think the throw would have been in time as that one was just a little bit too high. And now we go back to the top of the lineup here in Maddie Miney. Maddie 0 for 2 on the day. She's got a couple of fly outs to Maddie, left Maddie. field. So looking to redeem herself here in game two. She had three hits in the first game of the day. Looking for her first hit here in game two. Indians trill it. 3-1. to One, one out, top of the fifth inning. 
Cloud starting to roll back into the area. And she looked like she was going to try to bunt that one. Pulls back and takes it for strike one. So 0 1 is the count here to Maddie Miney. Wind is blowing out to center field. So it has suddenly shifted here in the ballpark. It's been blowing in for the most part of the day. Maddie lays down the bunt, and it's going to be a fair ball, he said. And so that will be a sacrifice bunt to get the runner over. That sacrifice bunt being brought to you by the ICC Baptist Student Union. The ICC BSU reminding you of the ultimate sacrifice paid for our sins. They meet Monday nights at 7.07, Wednesdays at lunch. Rachel Sternisha. Of course, as we're wrapping up the school year, you've got only just a few more opportunities to participate in the ICC BSU lunch and Wednesdays at lunch. All they ask is bring $2 and a friend for lunch and worship. Don't forget the $2 for your friend as well. And this is going to be Rachel Sternisha at the plate. Rach is 0 for 2 with a pair of fly balls to center field. So she's going to try to come in here and see if she can find a two-out hit. Hope Hartman is at second. She got there after that sacrifice bunt. She reached on an error, a throwing error by the pitcher. So Stradisha will dig in here. Playing her at regular depth and straight up in the outfield. That pitch just missing outside. Good looking pitch there. Called a ball. One and one now is the count. He's going to say it was outside when the catcher asked. So, one and one now is the count. Two outs. Rachel Stranisha at the plate. Hope Harbin, she's at second. Indians trail this contest three to one. Stranisha looks at that pitch across for a strike. One and two now is the count. Is Samantha Conley on deck? If Rachel can find a way on here in the top of the fifth, game two, three one, Colin with the lead. So what did the one-two offering here? Stranisha swings on this one, pops it up right side. Right fielder's charging in and will make the play on the line. And that's going to be another fly ball for Rachel. A great job by Gross. Got into a little bit of trouble, pitched around it with a fly ball to end the inning. We'll move to the bottom of the fifth. ICC trails it three to one here to Colin. But before we do that, we'll take a timeout and hear a word from the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Back with more right after this. The newly formed Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi wants to make sure you are receiving the best orthopedic care possible. Our staff of seven experienced board certified surgeons specialize in a specific area of the body and can treat you with the newest and latest technology available to fast track your road to recovery. Call us for same day appointments at 662-377-BONE and come see us at Gloucester Creek Village in Tupelo at the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Our specialty is you. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we shift now to the bottom of the fifth inning. For Colin, it'll be the two, three, four batters due up. Polk, Walls, and Poole. We do say a special hello to those that are watching on the streaming networks at Colin. And also a special hello to the ICC family tuning in here on Let's Go ICC TV dot com, the Red Channel. We'll be back on the Red Channel on Tuesday and Wednesday as softball will host homes, baseball will travel to Northeast, and then we'll have a Friday and Saturday twin bills. This is a fly ball out to the right side, and Maggie Smithy, or she that's Jessica Davis, couldn't get to it. And that's gonna drop for a hit, second hit of the day for the Wolves, and that's a leadoff single for Polk. She is now one and two on the day with a walk. So now this should be Hannah Walls coming up. And it will be Walls coming to the plate. 
So Colian looking for some insurance runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They lead it three to nothing thanks to the swing of the bats of Ke 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 excuse me, Kealbury, Washington. It was a three-run home run, and that's the difference in the game right now. Joanna Vasquez is out there in left field right now for the Indians, so she did replace Ellie Miney in the lineup. That is Jessica Davis. I said Maggie Smithy, but it is Jessica Davis out there in right field. She and Maggie are both blonde-headed, so that's the reason why I thought there might have been a change there. That ball skips across. 2-0 and now is the count here to Hannah Walls. So Colian trying to earn the split this afternoon with the Indians. 2-0 is the count. And that one hit her. So that'll be a hit batter. And now Colin cooking with grease here in the bottom of the fifth as they've got runners on first and second with no outs. Looks like we're going to have a runner come into this situation. Looks like this might be number 14 entering. Amber Brinson. And that is going to be the case. Coach Kirk is also wanting to come out in this situation. He may be going to the bullpen here. I tell you what, let's take a timeout. We'll come back and let you know as we tell you more about the three-day weekend coming up at ICC. Itawamba Community College is now offering three-day weekends. You can be one of the first to take advantage of a compact course schedule with a majority of classes offered Monday through Thursday. Let us customize your education to fit your needs. Become a part of the ICC family and apply today at apply.iccms.edu. ICC, the best start here. And we do have a pitching change here for the Indians. Your new pitcher into the contest, number 10, Mary Kate Butler, a freshman out of Pontotoc. She went to Pontotoc High School. So we're going to take a break and hear a word from Sonic and more. She takes her warm-up tosses here. ICC trailing it 3-1 to one here in the bottom of the fifth. Back with more right after this. Butler. Crunchy Fritos, warm chili, melty cheese, all together for 99 cents. It's like real comfort food. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone, and these guys keep pulling me back in. Pulling me back in. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves starting at 99 cents. And try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. A Fritos Chili Pie. Juicy Junior Burger. Or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. Celebrate outrageous amounts of toppings with Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest. With the most cheese and now with the most toppings at the nation's best price. Create your favorite pizza starting at 6 bucks. Pay, then express pickup at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as Mary Kate is finished taking her warm-up tosses here. She'll enter in a tough situation. No outs. Runners on first and second here. And Colin with a 3-1 to one lead here in the second game of the day. ICC got a one-hitter in the first game. From Olivia Burns, they won it 7 to nothing. So going to have to get something big time going here are the Indians if they want to rally in this one, but this is a prime opportunity for Colin to try to get the merry-go-round spinning here. Shows butt, pulls back, and takes it for a ball. So this is Marley Poole. She is 0 for 2 of the day with a strikeout, grounded out to the shortstop to end the third inning. A three-up, three-down third inning. That's been the only three-up, three-down inning for Colin here in game two. And now they're going to throw it over, and they've got the runner in a rundown here. Tosses it, and that's going to do it. Then they're going to try to get the runner going to second. Cannot. So a great play there as they snuck Hope, snuck Hope Harbin up from center field. So score that one two, eight to six on the putout of Polk. And now there's one out in the inning. Wall, excuse me, that was not Walls. That is number 12, Pettit, who re-entered the game. She was able to get over to second, got in just underneath the tag, or that would have been... A bizarre Little Caesars double play. And now the coach is going to ask the umpire to go into the infield to talk something over here. I didn't really see anything that would be in question right now, so I don't know what they're talking about. So we'll let them. So they're going to ask him if she went or not, and... 
So it is going to say two and one now is the count. So two and oh is the count. So that's what they were talking about there. Good job by the crew here in the press box helping me out on that situation. So 2-0 is the count on Marley Poole. Change up, misses outside for a ball. 3-0 now is the count. So 3-0 is the count here on the first baseman. And that pitch missing low for a ball. So now this will bring up Ashley to the plate. She walked in her previous at bat, also grounded out to second to end the first. Well, the Indians would love to see if they can turn two in this situation to get out of the inning with no damage done. However, Colin looking to fire up the bats here and build on this three to one advantage. The only out of the inning came whenever Carly Polk got caught in a rundown as they snuck the center fielder in at second base with the infield shifted that time. Polk did not see it, and she got picked or got caught in the rundown, two, eight to six. Shows bunt, runner goes, throw down, is in time! Good play that time by Samantha Conley. Two to five on the put out. We go back and look at that one. It's Sunday. And Samantha Conley says, thou shalt not steal. The second time she has picked off a runner this afternoon. And now there's two outs in the inning. The runner did advance to second. There's a shot up the middle. It's through the legs of Butler. They're going to ask the run to score, and she will. So a clutch two-out hit there. The Indians just did not try to relay that thing in. And Ashley... Comes up with a clutch hit there to push across a run. As that was Poole who scored. And it's now four to one, Colian. So a clutch run there for the Wolves to come up and get it there. Man, how big was that pickoff move that caught the runner in a rundown and also the pickoff on them trying to steal to third. But not only were those two plays big, how about the runner at first having the wherewithal to advance to second. If she doesn't go to second, then that run doesn't score. So two for two for ICC, one for Colin, taking care of the small parts of the softball game. And that's the reason why they're part of the top 20 in the country. So that pitch across for a strike. 0 and 1 now is the count here to Sherman. Sherman looks at that pitch high. 1 and 1 now is the count. One ball, one strike, and two outs. Harmony Ashley is at first. Ground ball, and it goes foul. One and two now is the count here. Can the Indians get out of the inning here with minimum damage done? Colin, however, trying to spark a two-out rally. They've already pushed across one run here in the bottom of the fifth. Would love to push across some more. They lead it four to one now in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Butler getting set to deliver. Swung on and missed for strike three. A big time Renaissance Bank, out, Renaissance Bank strikeout to end the inning there, the first of the game for Butler. But it was an RBI single from Harmony Ashley that scored Marley Poole. And Colin leads it 4-1 to one after five complete. We'll take a break and move to the top of the sixth inning. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. First American National Bank is a local bank. Our 10 locations are right here in Northeast Mississippi. Banking decisions are made locally by people who live here. It's been that way for more than 50 years. Our involvement in the community is important to us. That's where our roots are. Technology, it changes daily, but our community is what keeps us together. If you like high tech banking, we've got that too. Follow the flag to First American National Bank from Iuka to Tupelo. 
And welcome down as the Indians down to their final six outs of the contest. They trail four to one, and it has been a great day in the circle for Mackenzie Gross. Other than that solo home run back of the fourth, she scattered three hits. She gave up a solo home run, then back-to-back -back singles, but got a fly out to center field to end the fourth. Since then, she has been lights out. They did commit an error in the fifth. So now it's going to be Samantha Conley. Do up for the Indians, the three, four, five batters. Sam, Summer, and Macy do up here for the Indians. They trail four to one. Change up off speed in the dirt. One and oh is the count. Well, do the Indians have a rally in them? We'll find out. Can Colin close the door on this one and earn the split this afternoon with ICC? We talked about this, his top 15 tussle between two very good programs here in the state of Mississippi. As that pitch goes up high, 2-0 and now is the count. Not only the top two teams in the state of Mississippi, but two of the top teams in the country. Colin took Jones to the wire. Lost the first one in extra innings before getting swept in game two. As that pitch across for a strike, two and one now is the count here to Sam Conley. So Sam will dig in here. Two one is the count. Change up, it hung up. Three and one now is the count here to Samantha Conley. Sam is leading us off, so there's no outs here in the top of the six. Conley, Kreider, and, Cro and Cox do up. And there's ball four, so a leadoff walk issued to Samantha. Second time she has thrown a walk today. Last time was in her first at bat. She was left stranded in scoring position. And now this is going to bring up Summer Kreider. Summer Kreider. So we're going to have a runner come in in the case here for the catcher. Samantha Conley, and this is going to be Lily Moore coming in to run for the Indians. Number 13, Lily Moore coming in to run. Indians trail this contest 4-1. to one. ICC's got to spark the rally, and it's got to start now. But I tell you what, Mackenzie Gross, she's been selfish today. She has not handed out very many hits. As a matter of fact, each team with only three hits in the contest. The difference in this game right now has been that big three-run home run and a pitch hit situation from Kialbri, Washington. It was part of a three-run bottom of the fourth, and that's the difference in the game right now. Here comes Summer Kreider. She had a solo home run in her previous at-bat. She also popped up to the shortstop to end the first. Takes a look at that first pitch across for a strike. Moore took a little bit of a lead over there at first base, but will trot back with no throw. Looks like Ward is going to be heading out to the bullpen area. Might be getting loose just in case she's needed late in the contest here. Change up, and it's there for a strike. He was up the count now at one and one. Or excuse me, 0 and 2. We'll see what the count is. Yeah, 0 and 2 is the count. So Kreider's got to protect the plate here. 0 2 is the count. Ross getting set to deliver. That pitch missing high. Not a bad spot to miss that time. See if you couldn't get her to chase a pitch out of the zone. Good eye on the part of Kreider. One and two now goes the count here on Summer. Well, ICC fans would love to see her duplicate her last at bat. And so she's going to stand in and await this one two pitch. Kreider pops this one up. It's going to get out of play, so we'll stay at one and two. Good pitch that time from Gross, but a good job as well by Kreider to foul that one off and keep the at-bat alive here. One and two is the count. Runner at first. That is Lily Moore. She's coming in to run in, fa in place of Samantha Conley, who drew her second walk of the game. So one and two is the count here on Summer Kreider. Kreider showing bunt, now will pull back. There's a slow roller to the shortstop, a chance to turn two here. There's one, but they will not be able to get two. So that will be a fielder's choice, six to four on the putout of Moore. One away now, and this is going to bring up Macy Cox. So they're going to re-enter Macy in this situation because Mackenzie Toombs came in to run for her. Macy 
in the previous inning. And McKenzie was left stranded at second in the fourth. So now this will be Macy Cox coming to the plate with a runner at first. Four to one is your score. That was a big time RBI single by Harmony Ashley. In the bottom of the fifth to pick up that insurance run to make it a three one, three run lead, I should say. So Macy will stand in. Change up, runner goes. The throw down is not in time. It'll be a stolen base for Summer Kreider to move over in scoring position now. One out and a runner on second. And Macy will dig in at the plate here. So getting the signal sent in. Here from Colin. 0-1 is the count. That pitch missing low and outside for a ball. Big lead for Summer. And now she'll jog back to second. Almost daring him to throw it. But Sherman has been pretty solid today and just walking the runner back whenever she feels the need. One and one now is the count with one out. That pitch up high. And now two and one goes the count here to Macy. Casey Carpenter is on deck. Jessica Davis is in the hole. The Indians would like to wake up the bats. They got three hits in the fourth inning, but since then have been retired until a walk, or actually, excuse me, an error to Hope Harbin, and then a walk. And this is going to go for a hit. And Lily Moore had to check up just in case it was caught that time. Did not want to get doubled up. So unable to come around and score on the play, but a big time hit there. As you take a look at that on the Little Caesars instant replay and did not get away from the outfielder. Good job out there in left by Heyman to keep that one nearer. That's the second hit of the game for Macy Cox. And now the Indians have runners on the corners with one out. And we may be sitting in a situation here and see another runner coming in. See who they're going to enter to run. This looks like number four. I'll double check and make sure you can see her jersey. Or see if the home plate umpire give it to us. Coach Thompson is blocking my view right now. And yes, that's going to be number four for ICC. Landon Stoddard coming in to run. And this is going to be Casey Carpenter now at the plate. She did single in her previous at bat in the fourth inning. She also flew out to right in the second. So one out. Runners on the corners here for the Indians. The tying run is at the plate. Carpenter trying to spark the bats here for the Indians in the top of the six. That pitch across for a strike. We did see the Indians in game one do a, kind of like a little delay steal that not only successfully stole second base, but also got the run home. So you got to think in that situation, Colin would probably just say, go ahead and take second and not try to give up the free run. So 0-1 is the count here to Carpenter. The runner goes, and that is going to be the case, and they zip it down to third, and the ball gets away. And that's going to allow one run to score in the Indians. Push across a run on the throwing error. And now it's a two-run game, and the runner does go from second to third. So a stolen base, an advance on the error, score on the error as well. One and one is the count. And boy, a hit could be hit big here for the Indians. 4-2 now is the score. One out. Runner at third. There's a shot to the center fielder. Center fielder's going to go back, and it's going to camp underneath it, and it's going to go for a sacrifice fly, so the run will score there. We've got a one-run ball game. Well, Carpenter put a charge in it, thought it might have some legs to get out of the ballpark, but it did not. But it does work as a sacrifice fly and an RBI, and a big run scored there as Stoddard comes home, and it's now 4-3. to three. That sacrifice fly being brought to you by the ICC Baptist Student Union Reminding you of the ultimate sacrifice paid for our sins at the ICC BSU. Follow them on Twitter at ICC BSU. Jessica Davis now at the plate takes that pitch low for a ball. 
So the Indians score a run on an error and then had that sacrifice fly for Carpenter to put two on the board. It's now four to three. Davis pops this one up over the top of us here in the ICC Alumni Affairs and Foundation Broadcast booth. Find out how you can contribute to Itawamba Community College by visiting iccms.edu. That's iccms.edu. One and one now is the count. Davis calls for time, and the umpire eventually gives it to her, so she'll back out and we'll, we'll reset. Joanna Vasquez is on deck for the Indians. And Davis pops this one up. Center fielder is going to come in and record this one for the third out of the inning. So the Indians do get two runs on one hit, one error, and nobody left on base. We'll take the timeout and move to the bottom of the sixth inning. ICC gets a pair of runs to make it four to three. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this on letsgoiccTV.com. The newly formed Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi wants to make sure you are receiving the best orthopedic care possible. Our staff of seven experienced board certified surgeons specialize in a specific area of the body and can treat you with the newest and latest technology available to fast track your road to recovery. Call us for same day appointments at 662-377-BONE and come see us at Gloucester Creek Village in Tupelo at the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Our specialty is you. My burger goes best with mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Grass-fed beef. No, corn-fed. On the grill. Now, nah, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame seeds. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys are for Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the Coke. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the Coke. Only with the Coke. Coke and a burger. Come on. All right. That's where you get the flavor. And welcome back now to move to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Indians get a pair of runs in the top of the sixth to make it a four to three contest. Two up here in the bottom part of the inning is gonna be the seven, eight, nine batters scheduled up. McMillan, Pettit, I believe, may be back in the lineup as she was pinched hit for in a previous at bat. And then Heyman will be the number nine batter. So Colin trying to find a way to get those runs back. They gave up in the top half of the inning. ICC got a Run scored on a throwing error to third, trying to pick off the runner. And then the runner who stole the base, Stoddard, Stoddard went to third. She scored on a sacrifice fly to Casey Carpenter that was deep to center field. And so now this will be McMillan to start things off. She is 0 for 1 the day with a walk and a run scored. She grounded into a fielder's choice. That was in the second inning. Walked and scored on that three-run home run in the fourth. Mary Kate Butler, MK in the circle. That pitch missing for a ball. So 1-0 is the count here. And so Butler's pitch coming. This one popped up and it's gonna chase out of play off the top of the Colin dugout. And now even to the count at one and one. One ball, one strike, four to three. So one ball, and one strike, no outs as McMillan leading us off. She's playing second base today. There's a shot and what a play. Look what I found. Says Butler as that was just on a rope. Butler threw the glove up and found it. A hard hit ball that would have gotten through. As that was Butler on the play. So a line out recorded by Mary Kansas Butler for the first out of the contest. So now this will be Te Tori Pettit back at the plate. She fouls that one over the top of us here in the ICC Alumni Affairs and Foundation Broadcast booth. Dr. Jan Reed Bunch, Jim Ingram, and Tilda Bushlon doing a great job there. And a very important role for the college, raising money for ICC. Visit iccms.edu for more information on how you can help contribute to Etiwamba Community College. That pitch skips across and goes for a ball. One and one now is the count. One ball, one strike, and one out after a nice play by Butler. That pitch missing outside for a ball. Two and one 
is the count now. ICC faithful wanted that one, but I have to agree with the home plate umpire. It was a little bit too far outside the breaking pitch that was. So now two and one is the count. This one lifted left field. Joanna Vasquez tracking back and making the play. JoJo gets the out. And we'll see, we may have another batter coming into this situation here. And yes, it is. It's going to be number 20, Mobley, will come into that with two outs and nobody on. Last time, the Colin Wolves sent in a pinch hitter. It turned into a three-run home run. So now this is going to be Mobley coming into bat. She's wearing number 20. She's out of Grant, Louisiana. She went to Grant High School. She is a catcher and a freshman. Four to three is your score. We're at the bottom of the sixth inning. The Indians trying to get out of this inning and see if they can at least get one more run. Would love to see two if you're an ICC fan to see if they can push this game to the bottom of the seventh. Maybe even extra innings if possible. That pitch across for a strike to Mobley. Mobley seeing her first bat of the day. Batting in place of Heyman, who was 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk. Butler looking for the third out. There's a shot liner, and it's just over the head of a leaping shortstop. Good hit that time by Mobley as she just got it out over the top of the leaping Maddie Money at short. Man, if she could have made that play, it would have been big time but she did not, so this is going to be Heyman that's going to come back in to run in this situation. So Heyman re-enters the contest as a pitch hit single, and each time that Colin has sent in a pitch hitter here in game two, they have come away with some clutch situations. And so now with two outs in the inning, we go back to the top of the lineup, and this is Fortenberry. Taking a while to talk things over here as Heyman re-enters. So Heyman will take over at first after that pinch hit single, a clutch hit off the bat of Kelsey Mobley. So now with two outs in the inning, this is going to be Fortenberry. Fortenberry has been retired three times today, all by Maddie Miney, the shortstop. There's a swing and a miss for a strike. 0-1 oh, is the count here to Fortenberry. Fortenberry trying to spark the bats here with two outs in the inning. Runner at first. 4-3 to three is your score, ICC. Trailing this contest here in game two. That ball in the dirt, runner goes. Good, picked a good pitch to run on that time as she will get to second without an issue and now moves into scoring position. 1-1 one one is the count here to Fortenberry. So Colin trying to find a way to spark the bats here with two outs. That pitch drifts high, and now the count goes two and one. Two balls, one strike here on Fortenberry. Two one pitch coming, and it's in there for a strike. Nicely done that time by Butler to come back and fill up the strike zone. Two and two now is the count. Two outs, a runner on second. Four to three is your score. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning between ICC and Colin. Game two. Two two pitch coming, a liner, and it's going to be foul. Is that one just? Couldn't quite track in enough to sneak down the line that time. Good effort on the part of Summer Kreider to try to go out and find it. And so 2-2 two -two now stays the count. Runner goes back to second. And that one in the dirt. Runner thought about going. Good job that time on the part of Conley to block that one up and keep her at second. Now the count goes full. 
3-2 is the count here on Fortenberry, the center fielder. She lined out to the shortstop to end the fourth, grounded out to short to end the second, and grounded out to short to start the bottom of the first. 3-2 pitch coming. Swung on a miss, four strike three. The ball gets away. The throw down is in time, though. And a big-time Renaissance Bank strikeout to end the inning and get out of the jam there. So that is going to be the second Renaissance Bank strikeout, two to three on the putout of Fortenberry. So for the Indians, it's down to their final three outs of the game. Can they find some hits to maybe tie this one up or even take the lead in dramatic fashion here in the top of the second? We'll find out after we take this break. Back with more right after this. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. Crunchy Fritos, warm chili, melty cheese, all together for 99 cents. It's like real comfort food. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone, and these guys keep pulling me back in. Pulling me back in. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves starting at 99 cents. And try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. A Fritos Chili Pie. Juicy Junior Burger. Or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. Welcome back as we go to the top of the seventh inning, the ICC. Down to their final three outs of the game. It's going to be the seven, eight, nine batters due up here for ICC. Joanna Vasquez, Hope Harbin, and then we go back to the top of the lineup in Maddie Miney. Number two, Joanna Vasquez. So JoJo will try to start things off here on a positive note for the Indians. She popped up and was retired in foul territory by the catcher. In her first at bat, she's batting in place of Ellie Miney. So JoJo will dig in here. Gross is staying in the circle. Change up and there's a hit to start the inning. JoJo with a clutch hit on the first pitch she sees. And now the tying run is on the base here for the Indians. Clutch hit there for Joanna Vasquez. And now we go to Hope Harbin batting in that second Number spot. 17. Or should be nine spot. Harbin. So now the tying run is at first. Hope Harbin will come to the plate. She reached on an error in her previous at bat. Also grounded out one to three in her first at bat of the day. We'll see if she might be bunting in this situation. She does show bunt, lays it down, and this is going to be a sacrifice bunt. Throw over to first is in time. And JoJo will check up at second. Almost nobody covering third. Almost would have been a free pass there. But that sacrifice bunt being brought to you by the ICC Baptist Student Union, reminding us of the ultimate sacrifice paid for our sins. That's the ICC BSU. Brother Chris Burroughs and company doing a great job there in the oldest organization on campus. Follow them on Twitter at ICC BSU. So now this is going to be Maddie Miney at the plate as we go back to the top of the lineup. Tying run is at second here for the Indians. Maddie. 0 for 2 with the sacrifice bunt. Stands in, takes that first pitch for a strike. She had three hits in the first of the day, looking for her first hit here in game two. And I tell you what, if she can get something down to the gap, it would be huge for the Indians. As JoJo's got pretty good speed out there at second base, she does represent the tying run. So 0-1 is the count here to Maddie Miney. Ross is taking her time. Time is called by Miney, and the umpire will give it to her, so we'll step out and reset. 0-1 is the count. One out, runner at second. That's Joanna Vasquez, who started the inning off with a single, advanced to second on a sacrifice bunt. There's a shot, and it's going to be a flare to the third baseman. Reached down in the zone to go get one and couldn't find it. So that's just going to be a line out to the third baseman, and now there's two outs. We're going to have a new batter come in in this situation. It's going to be number 14 for ICC, Abigail Colvin, a.k.a. Gator, entering the contest in this two-out situation and the tying run at second. Abigail Colvin. So Colvin, can she do much like what we've seen Cole in today when they've sent in some pitch hitters? They've come up with some clutch big-time hits here. 
the sophomore, Abigail, at the plate. Trying to find a way to extend this inning. Tying run is at second for the Indians. So Colvin will dig in for the first time today. Gross looking for the final out. Colvin takes that pitch low for a ball. Samantha Conley is on deck for the Indians. They would love to see her get it at bat here in the top of the seventh. However, Colin fans hoping they can find this final out and pick up this victory here in game two to earn the split with the Indians. Four to three is your score. Tying run at second here for ICC. Gator at the plate. That pitch missing for a ball. Two and oh now is the count here to Colvin. A good looking pitch, but just a bit too far outside for the umpire's liking. Two oh now is the count. Two outs. Tying run at second. That's Joanna Vasquez who started it off with a single to start this inning. Advanced over on a sacrifice bunt by Hope Harbin. And Colvin takes that one across for a strike. Two of one now is the count. Good job by Gross battling back and finding the zone that time. 2-1 with Gator at the plate. Tying run at second in Vasquez. Abigail looks at that pitch high. Three and one now goes the count. So Gross running into a little bit of trouble here. Gator looks at ball four. The ball nearly gets away on that exchange as well. Good job, however, once again by Sherman to block that one up at the ball in the dirt. If it gets away, then the tying run gets to third easily, and we're going to have a break in the action here. We'll also have Rachel Stranisha re-enter to run in place of Colvin. We'll take the timeout. Can ICC find a two-out hit to tie this ball game? We'll find out when we come back. Back with more right after this on letsgoicctv.com. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Two outs. Runners on first and second. We're in the top of the seventh inning. ICC trailing four to three. Conley at the plate. The Indians have got to push across at least one to force us to the bottom half of the seventh and maybe into extra frames. Is that pitch across to Conley for strike one? So Sam, who has been sick all week, Trying to battle in and find a way if she can come up with a two-out hit here. Vasquez at second. Rachel Stranisha re-entered to run. Is at first. That pitch missing high for a ball. Well, the Colin coaches wanted that one for a strike. Did not get it. One and one now is the count. One ball, one strike, two outs. Tying run at second. Top of the seventh. The ICC trailing four to three. Samantha Conley at the plate, the sophomore out of Louisiana. Fouls this one back and we'll do it all over again. So let's set the pitcher for you. One ball, two strikes, two outs, four to three. Indians trailing here in the top of the seventh. Joanna Vasquez representing the tying run at second base. This is Samantha Conley at the plate. Pitch coming. Conley rips one. And it's going to get past the diving shortstop. They're going to ask the run to score. The throw is going to be not in time. Not in time. No. You've got to be kidding me. She got underneath the tag. Let's look at that on the Little Caesars instant replay. And we're going to look at it right here on the play. And I think let's look at it here. And I'm going to give you the honest opinion. Joanna Vasquez gets it to throw. Not in time, she was safe. Oh my God, what a tough break for ICC. As we look at it right there on the instant replay, not even close. So a blown call at home cost the Indians the ball game, but congratulations to Colin. They get the win in dramatic fashion. We're gonna take the timeout. 
and be back with more right after this with the Renaissance Bank Post Game Report. ICC falls 4-3 in controversial fashion. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. Itawamba Community College is now offering three-day weekends. You can be one of the first to take advantage of a compact course schedule with a majority of classes offered Monday through Thursday. Let us customize your education to fit your needs. Become a part of the ICC family and apply today at apply.iccms.edu. ICC, the best start here. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends. And stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money and know that we'll stick with you wherever you go. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. And welcome back to the Renaissance Bank postgame report. Controversy flying in that one. You saw the instant replay at the end of the game. We're gonna look at it one more time here. Joanna Vasquez easily beating the throw home would have tied the contest. The home plate umpire with a delayed call called her out. And so a tough, tough break there for the Indians as they fall four to three here in the final score. There it is, folks. Her armpit was on the place when on the plate when the tag was applied. So a tough pill to swallow there for the Indians. So either way it goes, we do get a split on the afternoon. So congratulations to Colin to battle back after losing the first game, seven to nothing, to pick up the win four to three here in game two. This is the Renaissance Bank post game report. Let's take a look at some Sonic stats presented to you by the Sonic and Fulton. Let's start with. Colin. It was Kelly Fortenberry who was 0 for 4 in the day with a strikeout. Carly Polk was 1 for 2 with a single. She was caught in a rundown on a pickoff. She also walked and struck out. Hannah Wall, she was hit by a pitch, so she was 1 of, uh, excuse me, 0 for 1 in the day. She also walked. And then Marley Poole, she was 0 for 2 in the day with a strikeout, a walk, and a run scored. Harmony Ashley, she was 1 for 2 on the day with a single, an RBI, and a walk. It was April Lynn who came in to run for her. She stole a base and scored a run. Sherman was 0 for 3 on the day. She did reach on an error. She also struck out. McMillan was 0 for 2 on the day with a walk and a run scored. Tori Pettit was 0 for 2 on the day. And then it was a big time hit off the bat of Kealbury Washington. She had a three run home run in her only at bat of the day. And that proved to be the difference in the ball game. There, Caitlin Heyman was 0 for 1 of the day with a walk and a strikeout. And then a clutch hit coming in from Kelsey Mobley as she had a single back in the seventh. So you look back at it, really is that three-run home run and then an RBI single with two outs in the inning by Harmony Ashley that was bigger than the home run, actually, as it did give uh, the, excuse me, give Colin the run needed, they, they needed to win. Now let's take a look at the, line, the stats here for Sonic. Maddie Miney was 0 for 3 with a sacrifice bunt. Rachel Stranisha was 0 for 3. It was Abigail Colvin who came in. She drew a walk and Stanisha re-entered to run. Samantha Conley was 0 for 1 the day with a pair of walks. Summer Kreider was 1 for 3. She reached on a fielder's choice, stole the base, and scored a run. And she scored on an error. She also had that solo home run in the fourth. It obviously had an RBI and a run scored there. Macy Cox, our Sonic star of the game. She went 2 for 3 with a pair of singles. Her courtesy runner, Landon Stoddard, came in and scored a run after stealing a base. And then it was Casey Carpenter, one for two on the day. She did have a sacrifice by on an RBI and also a single. Jessica Davis, 0 for three. Ellie Miney, 0 for one. Joanna Vasquez, one for two with a single. And you saw it, folks. It was a easy call for the umpire, but blown at home plate, she would have scored the tying run. Hope Harbin was 0 for two on the day. She reached on an error and had a sacrifice bunt. 
The losing pitcher for ICC is Kaylee Nelson. The winning pitcher, tip of the cap to Mackenzie Gross. She came in and absolutely handicapped the Indians all day as she surrendered only four hits on the afternoon. So that's going to do it here for game two. Your final score, controversial final score, four to three. ICC falls in game two after picking up a seven to nothing win in the first game of the day. So that's going to do it for our broadcast here on Let's Go ICC TV. Thank you for tuning in. Also a special thank you for everyone that has tuned in here on the Colin Sports Network as well. This has been Adam Gore and Madison Haley here for Let's Go ICC TV. We'll see you next time, folks, on Tuesday when Holmes comes to town to take on the ICC softball team. Have a great weekend, and as always, Roll Tribe. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association.